o'clock we have a meeting we have to go to to attend to that business so we have to leave unfortunately but don't leave without hearing from the leader of the Progressive Liberal Party, and dare I say it, the next Prime Minister, the Honorable Philip Brave Davis. Please welcome him. Thank you. Please be seated. Thank you very much, Senator Mitchell, to Lloyd and Charlene and the family to, I note the presence of Reverend Bishop Godfrey Williams and his lovely wife in the audience as well. I also note the presence of the former Senator Norris Carroll, who's also in the audience somewhere. Good to see you, Norris, Senator Norris. And to all of us here present on this grand and auspicious occasion, you heard what the Chairman had to say about what we have to do. I also, sorry, acknowledge the presence of the Minister and Member of Parliament for Central Grand Bahama, I am Lewis. Good to see you as well. And I, I, I notice you clap when, when, uh, when the minister, when Senator said, next Prime Minister. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know whether it's a sign of endorsement or whether you just wanted to wish me good luck <laughs> or whether you're just saying goodbye, but whatever it is. Please. 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 Let me just repeat, good day to all. And it's good for me to be back in Grand Bahama. Uh, my colleagues and I joined party members here on the island this past weekend in a very successful food drive where over 3,000 packages were delivered to various institutional homes, private homes, and distributed from Jonestown Community Park, I call it Eight Mile Rock, and our headquarters here on East Sunrise Highway. The gift and joy for me was speaking to and the general fellowship I enjoyed with the residents of Grand Bahama. Notwithstanding the challenges facing many families, I felt their indomitable spirit and saw their confidence, their hope, and their resilience. We were unanimous in our agreement that better days are ahead for Grand Bahama. Yes, weeping Endure it for a while, but joy cometh in the morning. We are all called on to have that faith. As I spoke to them, I reflected on my travels around the island and the relatively slow pace of the post during recovery and re reconstruction efforts. I was also reminded of a recent commentary on the impact and the general management of Dorian that appeared in one of the daily newspapers called Perspective. I'm paraphrasing the author who wrote that it is difficult, if not impossible, to dial back the perception that the government is uncaring in its general handling of Dorian, I quote. The article was populated with many damaged and dilapidated buildings. In the midst of a situation that many would easily describe as hopeless, where despair can easily set in, the Reverend Lloyd Rowe, with his wife on his side, he, a local contractor, has stepped forward and demonstrated great hope, resilience, and confidence in the people of Grand Bahama by investing in his future while significantly contributing to this island's post-hurricane post recovery and reconstruction efforts. I applaud you, Mr. Rowe. Yes. And your team of builders, and wish you all well with this new project. You know, I call on the government to do more to assist small businesses and vendors on Grand Bahama during this very challenging period. 
These vendors and small businesses are the engines of this economy. Another point I wish to make in connection with small business assistance is this. Giving financial support to businesses as an incentive to open and operate is counterproductive if the government imposes lockdowns as a first option. Lockdowns decimate businesses, the economy, and are job killers. Not to mention, it will undermine the government's economic recovery plan. We as a country must find a formula to coexist with this virus, suppressing its community spread while saving our economy. That is the fundamental challenge facing government and civil society working together. Remember, a surgery is still a failure, even if the surgeon succeeds in removing the cancerous tumor, but loses the patient in the process. The major concern facing many Bahamians as I move around the island, and indeed the country, is the economy and the future prospects for the creation of sustainable jobs. Therefore, we must act, act now and act with urgency. I note that the tourism minister recently told the media that government is close to making a decision on the opening of the Grand Lucayne Hotel. The government must reveal a workable strategic business plan if the country is to restore investor confidence, both domestic and foreign. These critical components include a reputable hotel operator, a reputable casino operator, the revitalization of the Lokaya marketplace, securing adequate airlift and a new international airport. The government's inaction in these critical areas has not bolstered investor and public confidence. So, it is incumbent upon the business community here to be vocal and vigilant as we work together to restore the infrastructure and the beleaguered economy of Grand Bahama. In this important exercise, the Chamber of Commerce, business owners, civil society, and policymakers have important roles to play. And yes, that means involving political parties too. I have an open door policy, and I am willing to meet, strategize, and draw greater public attention to the concerns of the local business community. Again, I congratulate you, Reverend Lloyd Roll, Charlene, on the official opening of Brick House Plaza. It is my sincere hope that other entrepreneurs will follow your lead as we attempt to build Grand Bahamas' future together, because together we will be stronger. I thank you for your kind invitation. Good day, and may God continue to bless Grand Bahamas.